for bout swap, which we knew was underway, that we would not report on the details of it. This was at the request of the White House, which asked us not to make it public because officials expressed grave concern about the fragility of the emerging deal and feared it would impede the safety, perhaps even put those Americans at risk. And so we are bringing this news to you first this morning, Gail, and it is certainly good news for the Griner family. It wow. is so exciting, and of course, we kept our word on that. Of course. It, 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 we, we've known about it for some time. Just to see it happen and come about, Margaret, I can't tell you how excited everybody is that was pulling for Brittany Griner. This is such great news. Thank you, Margaret. That's Thank right, you. Margaret. We'll check back in with you a little bit later. And yes, CBS did hold up our end of the bargain. And speaking of that bargain, uh, we do expect to hear from President Biden real soon. Chief White House correspondent Nancy Cordes joins us right now. Nancy, good morning. What are we hearing? Good morning, Nate. We have some new information. We were told by a U.S. official a short time ago that the president this morning spoke by phone with Brittany Griner herself and with her wife, Sherelle. We're told that the vice president was in the room in the Oval Office when that call took place. And you can only imagine what kinds of emotions were expressed on that phone call. We know that President Biden has been monitoring this exchange all morning long here at the White House. And we can also tell you that he personally signed the commutation of Victor Booth's sentence within the past week, which paved the way for this morning's swap. And now, this deal appears to have come together quite quickly within the past two weeks, according to our reporting, because as recently as the end of November, the State Department was still blasting the Kremlin for a failure to bargain in good faith. Over the summer, White House officials repeatedly told us that they had made an offer for a prisoner swap, but that they were getting no response. Now, that's not the type of thing that they usually reveal publicly, but in this case, they said they felt they had no choice but to up the public pressure because they were getting radio silence from the Russians. Now, Reiner's return, Reiner's return for boot is the Biden administration's second prisoner swap with Russia. Back in April, they swapped Marine veteran Trevor Reed for a Russian who had been convicted of smuggling cocaine. At the time, the U.S. used flight tracking services to make sure that the prisoner exchange was taking place as planned, and that's something they may have used today again during the exchange of Greiner, who was coming from Russia, and Boot coming from the United States. Now, we don't know exactly where Greiner's plane is going to be headed next, but we do know that the eventual destination, of course, is here in the U.S. All right, Nancy, thank you so much. You know, we had the interview with Sherelle Griner, who was Brittany's wife, a couple of months ago, and she was saying that she had spoken to her on the phone and she was so worried about her mental health yeah. that Brittany Griner was very worried that she might have been forgotten in this country. Yeah. And certainly that has not been the case. People have been working on it, and I can't only imagine. I reached out to Sherelle last week when we knew that this was happening. Of course, she's not saying anything. Nobody wanted to do anything that would jeopardize this day, yeah. and now yeah. that it is here. I remember you sitting down so with happy. her and um, asking you, does she have hope? And you said yes. that's all she can yes. is have hope. But you said there was some despair yes. um, th that she had in her eyes because she just did not know. Now she has the answers that we've all been waiting for, yeah. which is Brittany is coming home. Yeah, we want to see that plane land safely. Also, uh, eager for news on her health. I mean, Brittany was in That's a right. colony so for multiple weeks. Yes. We, the conditions there are reputed to be very bad. Right. Uh, so we shall see. The labor, the nutrition, even her mental health. Yeah, it, and it's been a year, right? Almost. It's yeah. been more, yeah. This is, I can barely speak. I'm so excited about this news today. Senior investigative correspondent, that's Catherine Harridge, has covered this story since it began. Catherine, Brittany Griner, as we know, is not going to go home immediately. We know that she has to go to a hospital for can you walk us through the process about what will happen to her now? What are the steps? Well, Gail, good morning. This is really the beginning of a journey for Brittany Griner and her family. And while every case is unique, it comes down to a three-phase process. First, as you and Margaret mentioned, a medical and mental health evaluation. Second, what intelligence officials refer to as a strategic debriefing. This generally involves the intelligence agencies as well as law enforcement to understand every element of Brittany Griner's detention, 
also the conditions, and more specifically, whether the Russians sought to obtain intelligence or information from her. And finally, reintegration. Many hostages I've spoken to discuss how there can be this sense of sensory overload after their captivity and the challenges of reuniting with their family after an experience where they feel they become a changed person. Catherine, you uh, recently spoke to some of the federal agents who were involved in the apprehension of Victor Boot. Uh, these are complicated trade-offs, uh, high Correct. diplomatic uh, discussions, uh, but I am curious, what did those agents tell you about this man, Victor Boot, who is now uh, free and going back to Russia? Well, former DEA agents that were directly involved in this global manhunt for Victor Boot told us that they've always seen him as a major threat to U.S. national security because he was an arms dealer with global reach because of his deep Russian connections. He was someone who was willing to sell arms to drug cartels, to designated terrorist groups, and individuals with the intent and the capability of harming U.S. Americans and officials. In addition, what we heard from these former agents is that it was a Herculean effort to capture Boot across three continents in 2008 in Thailand. He was eventually extradited to the United States where he was convicted of charges including conspiring to kill Americans. And finally, they told us they want to see the families reunited, but they had deep concerns about any potential trade with Victor Boot because of the message they felt it would send that it made good business sense to target Americans. It's understandable. Uh, Catherine, thank you very much. Appreciate that. We're going to bring in now.